Good morning and welcome to Cooking Like a Champion, ready to take you on another culinary journey. Today, we're gonna to be making one of my famous, delicious cherry cream pie stuffed French toast. It's a bit of a breakfast dessert infusion. Then we're gonna finish it off with another kind of breakfast type deal, Irish creme brulee. That's right. Chef Champion here to take you on a culinary journey I promise you've never been before. I'm here to help mold you, shape you, motivate you, and most importantly, inspire you into cooking like a champion. I'm Chef Champion, but my friends call me Ace. Welcome to the new age of culinary learning. Cook like a champion on this great station. So the morning light is in, we got the lights dimmed down. We're gonna be making a delicious breakfast for your loved one. Well, hopefully they're your loved one. So what we got over here too, I made a little something for my crew before we get started because they're always talking about how hungry they are. So what we're making here is an actual head cheese out of pork, all organic. Oh, as you see, my crew is getting them some already. Awesomeness. And we're pairing that with Schulzberg Creamery Kobe cheese. They just go together really, really well. You got the spicy pate with the uh, mild smoke Kobe. So I'll push that over there to the side and let's get started on this breakfast. So the first thing we want to add is our cherries and I'm using real Door County cherries. Just gonna add a few of those to my pan, just like so. And for those of you guys that don't know where Door County is, it's right up north in the heart of Wisconsin. That's where they grow the best cherries in the world. So while that's gone, we just want to season it up. I'll add just a little bit of cinnamon. A little bit of nutmeg. Remember, be easy on the nutmeg, just a little bit, just enough to say I put it in there. And then just a little bit of vanilla. And yes, I know you guys are probably gonna get mad because you're wondering why do I always gotta cook with booze? Because it tastes so good. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of rum to that. Let that flambe. And while that's cooking, I'm making a rum slurry. Remember, we made a vodka slurry in the last episode, and that's gonna help thicken it up. So essentially, what I'm making right now is my cherry pie. Make a grown man cry. All right, now that that's flambe down pretty well, I'm just gonna take our spoon and just add a little bit of that cornstarch right around into the skillet. And that's gonna help tighten everything up really nicely. So you have the liquid from the juices of the cherries that's bonding with the cornstarch and allowing it to thicken up. So if you guys decide when you're at home, ah, forget breakfast, I just wanna make a dessert, all you gotta do is throw this bad boy in one of those pie crusts I showed you how to do, and you're good to go. So I'm just gonna set this over here on the side, and then we'll go ahead and get started on our French toast batter. So all you wanna do is just start off with three eggs. I'm using these nice brown organic eggs that I picked up fresh this morning from one of the local farms. Always remember, when you guys are shopping, try and go as much local as possible. They always have the freshest ingredients. All right, always remember, whisk your eggs first. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in some of this sugar. And you can mess around with it. You can use brown sugar, white sugar, it's all the same. Give that a nice little mix. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit of this vanilla. I always love using vanilla. It just seems like it just wakes the food up for me. Hit it with just a little bit of nutmeg. And lots and lots of cinnamon. It's getting smoky up in here, huh? All right, give that a nice little mix. So last thing we wanna add is just a little bit of whipping cream. And you can definitely add milk, low-fat milk, whatever you want to add to it. You basically just need some type of cream base and give that a mixture. And as you guys see, there's definitely more eggs than there is liquid. That's what you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my grill started. Always, I'd always recommend that you guys use an electric griddle. I'm using Nesco's, they make an excellent electric griddle. It takes away all the guesswork. So I'm gonna set that at probably about 320 degrees. And then we're just gonna add just a little bit of butter to that pan. Or a lot of butter. Don't go short on the butter. And I'm using butter just because when we make our French toast, it's gonna give it that nice golden brown crust. You definitely don't wanna use oil, it's just gonna wanna fry it. And you definitely don't wanna fry it. 
And cooking spray kind of works, but then again, you're gonna lose it, so you're gonna end up having more cooking spray. So that's why I just use butter, so I'm good to go. Twist this up a little bit. Looks like we need to take a quick break, and we'll come right back, and we'll start putting this French toast together. Tundra Land baths are built with American pride and come with a lifetime warranty. With endless designs, you'll find something perfect for your home. Call 1-800-TUNDRALAND during our frozen Tundra sale. Save $500 on your bath or shower system and pay nothing for one full year. Plus, get a free luxury shower head and fixtures. Call now and you'll get a $100 Bed Bath & Beyond gift card. It's our way of saying thanks. 800-TUNDRALAND.com Feel like a champion. Offering therapeutic and relaxation services. Live like a champion. Lifestyle consultations are available. Ray Vibe. Schedule your next appointment with Rachel Champion today, located in De Pere, Wisconsin. Welcome to Lex Max, your modern African Caribbean one stop shop, offering a variety of African Caribbean foods and ethnic hair and beauty products. Diversify your taste buds and try something new. Come see us at 140 South McCarthy Road in Appleton, Wisconsin. Welcome back to Cooking Like a Champion. So right before, all we did, we made our custard, which we're gonna dip our French toast in, and then we just sauteed our pie filling, which yes, you can use for a regular pie, or you can use for this awesome French toast. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're just gonna be slicing up our bread, spreading some of that pure Midwest cream cheese on there, and then stuffing it with the cherries. So first things first is make sure you have the proper knife. As you see, I'm using a bread knife that has the nice ridges on it. You want that so it can slice through the bread very nicely. So all you wanna do is I'm actually doing a butterfly cut. And I hate it, I went to so many restaurants and so many places and they gave me French toast with two pieces of bread and something in there. The next time you see that, you tell them Chef Champion told me that that's actually a sandwich, that is not stuffed French toast. So what you wanna do is go over about an inch, slice almost all the way down as if so you still leave the actual bread still intact and go over an inch more and slice all the way through. So when you open it up, you actually have a pocket to stuff it. So we're gonna do about four of those. those stuff. Now we'll go ahead and add in our filling. So the cream cheese that I'm using too is actually softened. Get the softened cream cheese, it just makes your work that much easier. And we're just gonna spread that right on each side of the bread. And like I said, cream cheese is optional unless you live in the Midwest and then there's no option about that. You have to put the cream cheese in it. That's just the way they roll out there. All right. So now we'll go ahead and add in our cherry pie filling right to it. So then when you actually add that to it, you can close it up. And then now it's actually stuffed and not two slices of bread. Because you put two slices of bread as you go to cut it, it's just gonna go mush all over the place. Add in our cherries right to that like so. And I'm using Door County cherries by all means if you wanna stuff these with bananas, if you, you know, you can definitely play around with any kind of fruit would be made for an awesome stuffing. I like Bananas Fosters in Louisiana. I, I did an episode earlier on the Bananas Fosters stuffed French toast, which is pretty much the same concept, just with a little bit of a twist. Add the rest of those cherries to it. Always remember, just save about two or three for your garnish, because remember, presentation is everything. Let's check on our grill. I got my electric Nesco griddle on about 300 degrees, and I know traditionally everything says 350. I never did get that. It's like everything cannot be 350 degrees. So I'm doing it on a lower one, just so it gradually, slowly cooks. So now all you wanna do is just take that French toast, and as you see, like I said, it's nice and stuffed. We got it nice and closed, just like that, so the stuffing is actually in the French toast. So when you eat it, you can actually enjoy it all in one big, nice bite. So we're just gonna dip that French toast right into the egg custard mixture. Always remember to pull it up, let all the liquid drain out. 
and don't let it soak. I've seen some of those recipes too as well where they let it soak. Oh my God, please don't do that. There's nothing worse than a soggy French toast. I like my French toast to have a crispiness on the outside and nice, good moistness in the inside. And whenever I put that down on the grill, just take your hand and press down on it. And that way you know the whole bottom of the actual French toast is getting grilled. And why I use a griddle versus the old school, I grew up using the old school pans, you know, traditional way. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying go out and run out and buy a, a griddle. You can use a frying pan, it's just a little bit harder. The temperature is gonna get a little bit more higher and hotter on you, and it tends to not get quite as good as the even cook. All right, right that's cooking, you guys. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll finish this up and put it together. So we'll be right back. What children eat today can have a lasting effect on their overall health. Made with Door County Tart Cherries, Cherry Delights provide a healthy snack and taste delicious. Unlike sugary fruit snacks, these tasty treats are all natural and provide essential nutrients important to growing bodies. Let's help lead the way for our children to make better choices and understand the importance of healthy eating. When they ask for fruit snacks, give them a healthy snack made with real fruit. Cherry Delight Dried Cherries. Creative Sign Company and its highly skilled staff have been producing signs and graphics throughout Wisconsin and nationwide since 1985. Call Creative Sign Company today to find out how Wisconsin's highest rated sign company can help brand your image. All right, welcome back. So we'll go ahead and flip these over. Just like so. I know they're smelling this right now. I got some people upstairs that are all asleep and have no idea that I'm even in their kitchen cooking right now. So as you see, they got a nice little crust on there. Go ahead and grab our plate. Set that right on there. And when you're cooking these, uh, like I said, when I put them on the grill, they probably go for about a minute and a half to two minutes on each side. I would say after every minute, just kind of just take your spatula, look underneath it, and kind of see how they're working. You definitely don't want to overcook these, that's for sure. So I'll just press that down. Flip that over, oh, it looks like they're all good to go. See, that's got that nice golden brown crust over there. That's what you're looking for. If you ever make these and you cook them a little bit too long, they get a little bit burnt on you, you know, I guess it all depends on who you're serving them to. But if you're serving them to somebody important, I would just recommend just start all over. I know it's gonna suck if you have to start all over again, but that's the art of cooking. Sometimes things just don't come out right, and that's fine. No one's perfect. Especially me. I always challenge people to cook like a champion, and sometimes I don't cook like a champion, but that's okay, like I said. As long as I fix the mistakes that I make, and then don't make the same mistakes again, then I should be good to go. So then for this last one, I'm actually gonna cut that in half. And then we'll pick that up, see if we can get a good shot for you people. So now as you guys can see, it's stuffed with the Door County Cherry Delight strawberries with the cream cheese in there and the, the heat from the actual grilling actually makes the cream cheese melt even more. So in reality, I guess you really don't need syrup, but hey, my good friends over at Cherry Delight Country Ovens provided this cherry syrup, which is actually really, really good. And it's really organic and really healthy for you too as well. Just take a little nice. bit of syrup and just drizzle some of that right over it. Oh yeah, this is good eating right here, you guys. Now this is what you should be waking up to in the morning. Oh yeah. So last but not least, wait for it, it's not done yet. Chocolate almond toppings, courtesy of Cherry Delight too as well. We're gonna drizzle that over it just like so. Mm-mm-mm. 
So there you guys have it, your amazing stuffed French toast. Cream, cheese, cherry delight stuffed French toast with cherry syrup. I think I'm gonna go try and wake these people up to see if they wanna eat some of these. We're gonna take a quick break, don't you go nowhere. Wisconsin farmers support an 80 plus billion dollar industry that employs more than 400,000 people. Farmers continue to sustain Mother Nature's resources for future generations and create quality relationships with area businesses. Mark Toyota thanks the farmer. Jamar thanks the farmer. Ansane Associates thanks the farmer. Central Door Solutions thanks the farmer. Mid-State Truck Service thanks the farmer. And we thank you for buying Wisconsin potatoes. Choosing a good cheese takes years of experience. Let Shellsburg Creamery help you pick the best. No cheese hits the shelves without the Shellsburg Creamery stamp of approval. Look for our brand in your favorite store. Ask for it by name. Shellsburg Creamery, the taste of old-fashioned goodness. All right, welcome back. We're in the kitchen cooking like a champion, trying to teach you to do the same. As so far, we've made our Cherry Delight cream cheese stuffed French toast with the cherry drizzle. And then we've been uh, snacking on the uh, Glorious Malone's pate, which is mm, very, very good. A little bit spicy, so I'm trying to get my tongue to kind of calm down. And now we're gonna be making my, oh, I, mean, I love this recipe, it's so good. If you ever made creme brulee, Irish cream creme brulee. It's one of those things that a lot of people think are very, very hard to do because it sounds so fancy, but I think in reality, in Italian, it's pretty much just custard. So, first thing that you wanna do, is go ahead and get your eggs cracked. And with this one, just like the other one, you just wanna use the egg yolks. So we're gonna separate that. And please remember to separate the eggs from the yolk. I did this for an actual cooking class one time and I forgot to separate the eggs from the yolk. Man, it was not good. It was a hot mess. It pretty much came out like Irish cream pudding, but that's not what we're making. So like I always said before, always remember to whisk your eggs first so that you're not chasing the egg all around the bowl. So now to that, all I wanna do is add in some sugar. And for those of you guys out there that are looking for those four to five ingredient recipes, even though creme brulee sounds so fancy, this is one of those. So as you see, I have my eggs and my sugar mixed in together, and that actually, to me, looks pretty good. It almost looked like you can go ahead and eat that, which I guess you kinda could, but we're gonna finish this off. So now we're gonna add in a little bit of this vanilla. Madagascar vanilla, which is excellent. If you guys don't have Madagascar, by all means, you can use any kind of brand that you want. Just don't use imitation stuff. Remember, we're trying to cook like a champion, so you wanna use real solid ingredients that are good for your body. I'm a firm believer you can eat pretty much as much as you want as long as you eat food that's real, that your body knows how to digest. So now the last thing we want to add to that is some of this good old Irish cream. Mm -mm -mm. And if you guys don't have Irish cream, I don't expect you guys to go out and buy, buy a bottle. You can just use heavy whipping cream, dig in your cabinet, get that whiskey out, mix that together, and now you have Irish cream, homemade. Right, now that we have that mixed up nicely, so the really trick about creme brulee, I don't know if you guys have ever made cheese cake before, is you wanna make sure that you put it in a water bath. So what I, all I did is I took this like little rack right here and I got a probably about a nine by eight baking pan. You're gonna set that rack right in there. So when you actually put your ramekins in there for your creme brulee, they sit and they're not touching the bottom. That's very, very important because you don't want your creme brulee to overcook. The last thing that we wanna add is about a cup of whipping cream. The recipe that I'm doing is a half a recipe. So this half a recipe makes about three nice creme brulees. Give that a nice mixture. Always make sure all your ingredients are whipped up nicely, all coagulated together. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add that right to the ramekin. Don't fill it up all the way. You wanna fill it up about three fourths of the way. You should be good to go. Oh yeah, looking good, looking good. Awesome. 
So last thing we want to do is add in some water to that, and I would recommend using somewhere, something that you can actually pour it in there so it's not all messy. If your hands are a little bit shaky, I would recommend put this in the oven first, then put the water in it, because man, let me tell you, if you get that water in the creme brulee, you're done, it's over. Just add that. And what you're looking for with the water, as far as the level, is you wanna come up about halfway up the ramekin. Now I have my oven set at about 310, 320. You can kind of play around with that when you guys are at home. Um, I know that some people's ovens are a little bit different, so definitely check that. You don't need to cover or anything like that. You just take it just as is. Walk very slowly, very carefully right to the oven that's preheated at 320 degrees. All right, so now we've had those in the oven for about 40 minutes. We're just gonna carefully take these out one by one. Very careful, they're nice and hot. Set those to the side. And I know you guys, you guys have spent all this time working and you're ready to just dig into it right away. Please discipline yourself because they have to go into the refrigerator and set for at least four hours, I would recommend. So I'm gonna throw these in the refrigerator. All right, looks like these are nice and perfect just the way I want it. As you see, it's just pretty much just a nice custard. Give it a little jiggle, nothing's moving. That lets you know that you let it rest long enough. If you ever pull these out and it's still moving, you need to put it in there and leave it in there for a couple more minutes or a couple more hours, so to say. So here comes the fun part. All you big grown people out there that love to start things on fire, this is a perfect way for you. Please don't let your kids do it, just do it for them. You know, I wouldn't recommend doing this for little kids, that's for sure. So with the creme brulee, all you want to do is just take the sugar and just add the sugar right into the actual ramekin. And all you want to do is just move that around a little bit because you just want the sugar to coat it. You don't want to just, you know, shove all that sugar in there. It's definitely not a sugar topping. And then we're going to add the remaining of it to the other creme brulee. Give that a nice little shape. And I'm just using regular fine white sugar. I know some people, they'll tell you, oh, you gotta use this type of sugar, this type of sugar, but what I realized that regular white sugar just works fine. And it's ingredients that I know you guys always have. If you guys ain't been paying attention to all of my episodes, I try and use all ingredients that are all natural and things that you would find in your refrigerator. Because the worst thing I want for you guys is to go do all this expensive grocery shopping on things that you're not gonna use all the time. So now comes the fun part. I got one of these little fancy creme brulee, uh, creme brulee burners that I picked up at Cook's Corner, but you can find this at any one of your local cooking stores. And all you want to do is, once you start it, kind of don't put the flame directly on it. You want to be probably about a half of an inch over it. And you're just going to kind of go in like little circles. Whoop. And you're going to keep doing it. You'll eventually start to see it start to bubble and start to brown. That's why it's important to just keep going around, just like so. So now I'm creating that nice caramelized shell to go over that custard. Mm -hmm. Nice and smoky. So we'll push that one to the side and then we'll go ahead and finish the rest of them. Always remember, you guys, when you guys are at home and you see these recipes, understand that every single recipe is meant to be altered some type of way. So get creative, have some fun with it. If you don't like the Irish cream, don't add in the Irish cream. You know, if you want to actually add a little bit of chocolate chips, add some chocolates. Now you have a Irish cream chocolate creme brulee, which sounds pretty good. I might have to do that for one of my episodes. We got one more, and then we'll finish this up. And I know every time I hear creme brulee, you automatically think, oh, super fancy, five, dine, five star fine dine restaurant, but it really isn't. As you guys see, simple, basic ingredients. That's what I'm here for, America, to teach you the simple way of cooking fine dine. So last thing we wanna do, most important thing we can ever do is taste test. So let's go through a little rebacks what we did all day today. We started off with our Cherry Delight, cream stuffed French toast with a cherry drizzle. And then my crew's been snacking on that Gloris Malone's pate and Schulzberg um, Kobe sausage. And now we have our creme brulee, which let's see, that one's cool. Set that up there and let's give it a try. See how it tastes. 
You see how it has, can you guys hear that? So as you see, you can kind of hear that nice little crispiness, that glass, that cover that goes over that creme brulee. So we'll just dig right into that. That's the way it's supposed to taste. That's the way it's supposed to be. Mm -mm. Oh, I think I hear somebody coming, so let me go ahead and get my last bite in before they come down here and demolish this. Breakfast, dessert breakfast. There you have it, you guys. Mm. We'll see you next week. Mm. Today's show is brought to you by Schulzberg Creamery, Glorious Malone's Fine Sausage, Cherry Delight of Country Ovens, Tunderland Home Improvement, Cooking Like a Champion is produced by Creative Edge Productions. Chef Champion here to take you on another culinary journey. Whether you want to cook like a champion or just have a champion cook for you, Chef Champion LLC is your one-stop shop to culinary goodness. We offer a variety of services like private dinners in your home, professional cooking classes, motivational speaking, recipe development, and more. Need your brand promoted? What better way than to have a champion represent your brand right here on my show? Hire me today for your personal Chef Champion culinary experience.